will be talking about death and dying, and I recognize that this may be very uncomfortable for many of you, and that's exactly why I'm here. It turns out that we live in a culture that denies death even in speaking about it. We don't use the words death, dying, dead. We don't refer to our dead as dead bodies. So I'm gonna warn you now, I will not be using any euphemisms for death in my talk. As you can see here, I'm already showing you a picture of dead people. <laughs> Up here we have my friend. This is Neanderthal's remains found recently in France in a cave so well preserved. And what is so fascinating about this discovery is that these remains are estimated to be 50,000 years old. And this is the first time in recorded history that we know that Neanderthals stopped when one of their own died and made symbolic meaning out of their death by burying them. There is even some evidence to suggest that flowers were laid to rest with this person's dead body. That's 50,000 years ago. Ever since then, we have been making meaning about death throughout the globe. There's approximately other 20 other sites across Europe with Neanderthal remains that have been buried. And another amazing finding is that some of these bodies show evidence that they, while living, were ill, that they had injuries, that they had poor teeth, which also shows that there was symbolic caregiving. Otherwise, these individuals would not have been able to survive. So since we've been making meaning of death for so long, I want to take a moment to highlight a few of the different ways that people make meaning about death around the world. Sky burial. I don't know how many have heard of it. Uh, it's totally a misnomer. Burial is not composed in this. Uh, it turns out that for folks living in Tibet and Mongolia and other regions who practice Buddhism, a very sacred way to care for their, their dead is to take their dead frequently in Tibet atop the back of a yak that is purchased just for this ceremony. They travel far up atop a mountain and there the body is laid out to be eaten by vultures. This might sound weird to you, but I suggest open your minds. What do we do currently in the United States except hermetically seal our dead in multiple containers after pickling them? Okay, not that strange after all. In India, we see that those who practice Hinduism will cremate their dead in funeral pyres along the Ganges River. And after the remains are cremated, they place the ashes, bone, and dust into the river as part of the symbolic meaning about their transition into the next life or to the afterlife. So it comes as no surprise that whenever European settlers came to the Americas, they brought with them their death traditions that came from their Christian roots. And what we see is that they started off with a very, very simple burial, a wooden casket or coffin, and a Christian officiant would follow uh, to a cemetery and perhaps say a few words. But the dead were cared for in their homes by their loved ones before this. And in those ceremonies, it started out as being mostly silent. As time went on, they started to speak a little bit more about the individual's life, what they'd accomplished, who were their loved ones they would be leaving behind, and what would be their legacy. Down the road, we see less of talking about the individual and more of talking about uh, the faith tradition and reciting a few key scriptures from the Christian Bible. Now, everything up until this point has been moving rather smoothly, right? Rather smoothly. And then we, here in the United States, have a major interruption that is the Civil War. In the Civil War, we saw 
mass human death occurring at such great rates that it created sheer chaos. Military officials could in no possible feasible way identify all the bodies of the dead soldiers, certainly not to uh, send notice home to their families, and certainly not have the time nor the resources to return their bodies home so that the families could bury their loved one. But here comes an industry interrupter. Folks who knew how to embalm bodies and had this fancy new chemical compound that was to enter this, this uh, embalming fluid into bodies, which delayed uh, the decomposition process long enough for the long journey home so that the, the dead's relatives could honor them. Now this is an important and crucial turning point in how we do death and dying here in the United States. Because after the Civil War, we were still caring for our dead in our homes. We were still burying them in plain wood boxes and we were still having very simple services with our Christian clergy. But these embalmers were still around and looking for business. And it turned out that once we embalmed dead bodies, we kind of liked the way they looked. They looked a bit pretty, and in cases where people had been ill, they looked well again. And this began a long process of us slowly handing over more and more of the responsibilities of caring for our dead to professionals, which created the death care industry in this country. And there have been some problems that have come along with that. I feel like if I get to speak on a TED stage, most people might want to thank their parents. I'm going to thank mine and introduce you to them. In the bottom right, that's my parents, Vicki and Michael Pearson. Uh, you might wonder why I care so much about death and dying. Well, it's because I've spent the better part of the past 25 years pondering what it is that makes for a good death. And it's because my parents died when I was fairly young. In fact, I remember when my mother was buried, that oak tree was simply a twig about this tall. And I'm not that old, okay? Uh, and so here's the thing. Whenever my father died during my first year at community college, I got my first glance at this new system, this new death care industry we went in, my brother and I, and we said, all right, we, we need to plan a funeral for our father. And, and they showed us many options, and we kept continuing to let them know that our father was but a simple man, a simple man. And I, I tell my students frequently, you don't know what you don't know. So I asked what I thought was the most obvious question, do you have any specials at this moment? They did not. This is not a common practice in the death care industry. But what happened was my brother and I spent every single penny we had between us to give what we were told would be the dignified farewell to our father. And I find this to be significantly problematic. So if you can see, this is part of Candy Chang's amazing community art installation, and it came to St. Louis several years ago, where people are allowed to write in what they want to accomplish before they die. And you can't see it too well, because I tried to give other people some space. But there with that arrow, I wrote, start a nonprofit funeral home. I thought perhaps this is the solution. Maybe we shouldn't be making a profit off of death, and I thought about how can I make this happen, because I got worried. My brother and I were fortunate enough to have enough money to pay for our father's funeral and burial expenses, but the average family cannot in this country. Today, a standard funeral costs more than $7,000 if you're going for the traditional route, and that's not counting 
any of the costs that come with the cemetery. You add that in and conservatively, you are looking at spending $10,000. And I'm just gonna throw it out there. Y'all, I don't know about you, I don't have 10 grand just hanging out. I don't, I need another option. So what we see here in the top right is what is a traditional steel casket today where we're using steel uh, to bury inside of either a concrete or steel vault into the ground. Uh, or we have, for a fraction of a cost, slightly, you know, taking off of tradition, a recycled cardboard box, also a casket, I, I happen to be a fan of this. I have one in my closet. I think it's gonna work out just as well to hold my dead body. Um, so, and it didn't cost quite as much. So this is my startup. Here's my big groundbreaking idea. I don't want people to go broke because someone they love died. I, I hate to think that that's revolutionary, but it might be. I want people to be able to focus on being able to bereave, to have the time to mourn the loss of their loved one, to have time to celebrate their life. And by doing that, I'm partnering with a death doula, and if any of you are licensed funeral directors, contact me afterwards, we're looking for you. Come to the nonprofit side. We will be change makers, not only in the St. Louis area, but there, we are members of this death positive movement and it's taking not only this country by storm, but it's a global phenomenon. We want to take back control of our dead and dying and the processes that go along with each. So you may wonder, what is a good death? Whenever I facilitate these death cafes, which I've been doing for over three years, this is all we talk about. And so I'm gonna tell you what I think might be a few things that make a good death. Number one, acknowledge that each and every one of you is going to die. That doesn't have to be a bad thing. In fact, I found that the more I talk about the fact that I will die and that every person I love will die, I find that every moment of my life is so much more meaningful. So much more meaningful. That to me is the key to having a good death, talking about death, talking about living, sharing it with your loved ones. Being prepared for the fact that you will die. And then talking about it some more. So if you want a good death, please leave tonight. Start tomorrow. Go to a library. Ask questions about death and dying. If you're curious or afraid to have that first conversation, a librarian is the first person to ask. I'd like to look for a book on death and dying. They're not gonna say you're weird or strange and unusual. They get all sorts of questions. They're the perfect person to ask. And once you find that great material, share it with your loved ones. And then make decisions about what is gonna be your best death. Get that in writing, and then keep talking about what's gonna make your best death. Thank you. Thank you.